Randomized complete block design, arguably the most common experimental design regardless of the field of study. Um, we'll explain what it is and when to apply it, what is the most appropriate situation where you can apply randomized complete block design, how to collect the data, how to analyze it, and explain the result in the context of the problem. So first of all, what is it? and why it's so popular. Think about a situation we are testing a particular type of diet or some kind of food on um, cows, growing cows. Um, now to test that, now think about this, we have probably, I don't know, 20 different cows, variety of cows in the world. They're living in 10, 20 different types of climate condition, hot, cold, humid. Um, so there are so many factors that we can't have any control. Now, if we randomly pick cows from the entire world, let's say there are millions of cows in the entire world, if we just randomly pick and then uh, feed that particular diet against something what they're using now and then compare how they grow, then the experiment will have a lot of error because of different types of cows, different locations they grow. Um, so these factors that we can't control um, disturb the experiment, increase the experimental error. The randomized block design is a technique to reduce this nuisance factor effect, basically reduce the experimental error. The goal of this design to reduce the experimental error, and that's why it is so popular. Um, now let's um, let's let's talk about an example. Um, so let's say we are testing particular um, fuel type. Um, we want to know what type of fuel or gasoline provides the best uh, miles per gallon, best gas mileage, best fuel economy, um, which fuel type produces the best fuel economy. Now, cars, they run in all kinds of climate conditions. They run in hot areas, they run in cold areas, and we can't have any control over them. So how do you account for those type of uh, variation in the experiment. So we can block this climate condition factor. So here is the data file where let's say we are collected data from two different climate conditions and then we are testing three different types of fuel. I'll post a link to this data um, here in the openregular.com so you don't have to type all that. Um, so I have copied the data here in Minitab. Let's see how to analyze the data first. So you can go stat, DOE, ANOVA, generalized linear model, I like that because it has lots of flexibility. And then leave everything as it is. And then they found significant, both of them, if you found, so let's explain what that significant result means. So in the openeducator.com, so step number one is the hypothesis. So the fuel type one is equal to the fuel type two is equal to fuel type three with respect to the fuel economy. So because the probability is very low, we have found that is zero. Probability is p-value is calculated for the null hypothesis. So this probability is very, very low. So null hypothesis is not gonna happen. So we'll reject the null hypothesis and we'll accept the alternative hypothesis. So when you accept the alternative hypothesis, the alternative is basically anything other than what is in the null hypothesis, meaning that fuel type one could be not equal to fuel type two or fuel type three and so on. So next question would be, okay, then which fuel type is the best and which one is the worst? So once you found the significant result, the next thing is to run something called post hoc analysis, basically pairwise comparison. Let me show you how to do it in Minitab. Simply, you can go to STAT, ANOVA. If you run the pairwise generalized linear model already, then this comparison will be visible live. You can simply select both of them and get the results. So it looks like the climate is significantly different to climates also. The, all three fuel types are significantly different. Um, so let's see which one is the best and the worst. So it looks like fuel type one is the best and fuel type three is the worst. 